Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Rabia Mahmood and welcome back to lecture number 12. Today in this lecture we are going to look at the Middle English period again but uh, at the Middle English period from one new perspective and the perspective of that language would be syntax and vocabulary. In the previous lecture we have looked a little uh, at about uh, orthography as well as the morphology, the two uh, domains of language we have discussed in our previous lecture and today in our, uh, this lecture we are going to start uh, with the syntax and then vocabulary items, uh, the choice of the lexical items, it goes a little uh, above. Uh, middle English syntax and vocabulary. Let's see that what was the Middle English syntax and let's see that what were the changes that have taken place uh, since the Old English period to the Middle English period and then on to the Modern English period. Uh, middle English syntax and vocabulary. I hope that all of you are already quite clear about syntax but for your convenience I'm telling you again that syntax is the grammatical grammatical uh, component of a language. While we look at the grammatical structure or the grammatical component, grammatical structure of a sentence or the sentences that move on we call them syntax and then the term vocabulary. Vocabulary it refers to the choice of the choice of lexical items that what uh, what were those and what were the changes that have taken place in this? Yes, Middle English syntax and uh, firstly we are going to analyze the sentence structure, the grammatical structure of uh, Middle English only within phrases. Our focus would be more on the phrases rather on the sentences. Uh, <laughs> the first point in this is that adjectives usually before nouns. Yes, it was uh, quite an uh, uh, it is quite an obvious thing, uh, and perhaps it was a practice in Middle English period that adjectives were most of the time were used before the nouns. Uh, for example, an earthly servant. It was uh, written in this way. An earthly servant is the uh, the above one is an example of the Middle English English. Uh, then occasionally after the union in the after occasionally after the noun in a poetry. Uh, while we talk about poetry, poetry is you know that is a literary variety of the language that is. Uh, different that is freelance that most of the time does not follow any grammatical structure yet while we trace it, while we trace the some syntax in uh, within phrases in the poetry we see that adjectives were placed in the poetry after the nouns for example you can say uh, you can see that it is written shores sweet uh, shores, shores is a noun and so it is an adjective that is referring to the noun showers so uh, this, this is placed after the noun whereas in the simple sentences the, the sentences that were not of uh, literature it was, it was uh, written before that. Syntax in phrases uh, yes syntax in phrases with more than one adjective sometimes one uh, before the noun the rest after it yes uh, with more than one adjective when there were uh, more than one adjective like uh, two or three adjectives let's say if they were uh, they used to come in a phrase sometimes one before the noun one no one uh, phrase used to be there before the noun and the rest after it for example a good wit and a tentative yes a good wit and a tentative, a very new structure because uh, in our uh, in our in, our, in these days in the modern English we see that we write the two adjectives with the commas 
and all all of them come before noun for example if if there is a word a good large plenty of work is to be done is to be done in this sentence there is good large plenty of these are the three adjectives that have been used in before the noun this is a noun these three have been used before that so uh, it is uh, quite opposite to the modern day english because in uh, here it is used as a good wit and a retentive and they are joined by two uh, retentive is an adjective that is referring to the noun that is wit uh, uh, it could have been a good and retentive wit okay when we come uh, towards uh, possessive phrases we say that we see that there is no apostrophe yes quite uh, opposite to ours in modern english today we have while we talk about the possessive uh, 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 phrases we have uh, an apostrophe over there for example if you say that this is uh, this is rabia's pen so i would write down firstly uh, this is rabia then there is apostrophe this is rabia's pen it is one phrase rabia's pen whereas uh, they don't uh, have any apostrophe in their phrases uh, it is uh, it is written as upper man's prosperate uh, other man's prosperate it is written over there then the sir sometimes becomes is go to uh, go to the raven's nest yes uh, the sir the apostrophe s is sometimes converted into is as it is written here go go to the raven uh, is nest in this is as a, a structure a phrase of the uh, old english uh, whereas uh, while we to look at this from modern english perspective we say this is ravens apostrophe s it it becomes raven is okay middle english first occurrence of for possessive yes uh, if there are some uh, possessive uh, uh, possessive nouns that they have to be used what they would do they would uh, put of uh, for the possessive nouns before that for example after uh, after the laws of our loan uh, of our law of our loan according to the laws of our land uh, it is written this way that the, they have put this off uh, for the our uh, just to show its uh, its uh, con its uh, relation with the next of the phrase that is our land for example our land is a possessive uh, noun and uh, this is uh, it has off has been placed before that possessive noun J instead of that apostrophe or something else then middle english possessive phrases uh, let look at some other phrases possessive phrases there was a structure that was followed uh, the first one possessive plus nouns plus noun modifiers possessive plus nouns plus noun modifiers possessive means the duke's place of lancaster yes firstly comes the possessives then comes the main noun the duke's place then the noun and then if there is any um, uh, modifier then it used to come after that the duke of lancaster's place instead of the duke of lancaster's place the duke's place place comes first that is a noun and then comes lancaster and if there is a modifier it comes later on okay then uh, when we come towards double possessives uh, both of and possessive pronouns came in with uh, middle english the captain look at the spellings of captain the captain took away uh, obligation of mine uh, that the captain took away obligation of mine the captain it is that we have uh, that they have placed 
of before the possessive pronoun as well. Not only the possessive nouns, but also possessive pronouns of has been placed before that. Adverbial modifiers. There are adverbs and adverb phrases. They came before the words that they modified more often than in uh, modern English. Yes, adverbs is a something that modifies a verb. As uh, as all of you know, it very uh, very it is very very clear that uh, adverb is a word that modifies or qualifies a verb. Adverbs and adverbial phrases they came before they used to come before the words they modified. Okay, actually uh, they modified it means they used to come before the verbs. The words, uh, the adverbs, and the adverbial phrases they used to come before the words. They were they modified more often than in modern English. Uh, for uh, for example, the um, example is given here. Here, you shall fast in all your uh, works. Yes, ye shall fast in all your works. You must first in all your works. It is uh, written in all. What is uh, you shall? You must. It's a. It's an adverb. You must do. You must first. They they are coming more oftenly before the uh, main uh, word to which they are modif to which they are modifying or they are enhancing. Then another example is given in the next uh, sentence, and this is meekly be seek. To the high God, meekly beseech to the high God. Yes, meekly beseech. Meekly is an adverb. It is coming before beseech, and to the high again is it's an adjective, and it is coming before noun. The negatives, for example, n e, they always came before the main verbs and often contracted with it. Yes. See, let's look at the example. Then we are going to understand this point as well. This is the third uh, point of adverbial uh, modifiers, and it is uh, said that the negatives uh, n e uh, always came before the main verb. Yes, it always. I know it faint. I would not take a farthing for Saint Thomas Shrine. Yes. N e always uh, came before, always came before the main verb. I know, I would not, know, would not. Fange, fange means it, it is take. And often contracted, and the word is that, and they often contracted with it. Yes. This feature tells us that. The negatives, if uh, there were some negative sentences that were in use uh, for this thing, the negatives always came before the main verb. They used to come before the main verb. The main verb is what is take. I would not take. Fange, F A N G E. This is take basically. This is the main verb, and the it it. Um, the adverb would come before the main verb. It is coming. Yes, the word is no. N e n e actually is a word. Just as we have got today, uh, the word is not in today's English. In uh, Middle English, uh, we had this n e n e. Okay, I know uh, faint of uh, farthings for Saint Thomas Shrine. Yes. It is coming before that, and the second is it is often contracted. Contracted, it becomes short. For example, when it has mixed with the wood, not and wood, a comp as we say these days, wouldn't. There is one word that is wouldn't, shouldn't, don't. We use this word rather instead of saying. That wouldn't and shouldn't they 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 used to do the same thing. The contractions were there, and they had written I knowed. No is for not. Ld ld is for would. I nod. I nod. Fange a farthing of Saint Thomas Shrine. I hope that this point is clear. Okay, as in Old English, double negatives were very very common in Middle English as well. He never yet know. 
He, yet, he never yet no violence nay said in all his life unto no manner wait. Yes, look at the language of the Chaucer. He never, there is one negative, yet no violence nay said. The three times there are the triple negatives that in the next line, in all his life unto no manner wait. The double negatives are coming on, and these are uh, very, very common. These were very, very common in the double English, or oh, sorry, old English, as well as in the middle English. Preposition phrases. Prepositions still occasionally followed their objects. Uh, yes, uh, as up till now, we see that firstly there is there comes a preposition, and then comes an object that follows it. Same was the case in middle English. Prepositions still occasionally followed their objects. He said him to, to, yes, uh, he, he said him to, to, after this, uh, the next object would come. And uh, so we see that to, the preposition is followed by one object. In relative clauses, prepositions usually came at, at or near the end of the phrase. Uh, for example, the place that I of speak. Sometimes uh, this is a different uh, sentence construction. The structure is different. The place that I of speak, of speak. It is. It has been uh, converted to the of speak. It has gone uh, to the different uh, to the end of the phrase of speak. Ra the place that I of speak. It is speak of is a preposition having an object again. Although the sequence is the same, but the position of prepositional phrase has been changed into a sentence. It has come towards the end. Precious stains that he might buy a kingdom with. Precious tonus. Precious tonus that he might buy a kingdom with. Yes, a kingdom with. A kingdom with. Yes, this is with, this is a preposition. It is coming towards the end of a uh, sentence. So, uh, that he might buy a kingdom with. Yes, it is, it is coming towards the end. These were some of the positions of the prepositional phrases that were uh, very much prevalent in that era. Then some verb phrases. Perfect tense, for example, have plus past participle. They developed in the Middle English. Uh, yes, as we say uh, that uh, when we talk about the perfect tense, we say that is can't be ji chuka hai, chuki hai, aata hai, and has, have, and had. Uh, these are the three things that come plus the third form of the verb. This is a very, uh, uh, we can say, stereotypical idea about uh, uh, the construction of uh, perfect tense and. Uh, we uh, let's uh, look at it. This was actually it, this is actually continuing from uh, this age, from uh, from a very very uh, age uh, that is a, for a very very old age that is Middle English period. Perfect tense would have have plus the past participle. Past participle means the third form of the verb uh, with the, the form of the verb that comes with ed. That is a past participle. It was developed in Middle English period. You have done our kyun wo. You have done our family wo. You have done. Have have us done. You have us done our kyun wo. This is a Middle English phrase, a Middle English uh, past participle phrase, and uh, it was uh, developed. Actually, it started into that era. It is coming with the have plus the past participle or the third form of the verb that we say in the modern English. Then when they talk about the progressive tense, for example, uh, it comes with this formula. The formula, the first formula about the perfect tense is have plus past participle. Uh, the second formula about progressive tense is be plus present participle. 
they would uh, they would start at b plus plus there would be a present participle for example that it is r m etc it is was also developed in this middle english period sometimes with in or on yes there are the two words that were important it was developed with in or on for now is good going going right there for now is good going going right there so we, this is a progressive tense it is telling about the progresses of the progre progress of something some development of something for now is good given um for now is good given going the word i n g and you know it comes with we said it comes with b where a um, means a plus present participle for now is good grain going right here yes it is coming with present participle or we can say the fourth form of the verb i am in building of a poor house i'm in a building of a poor house the next example is and uh, the word in uh, that was uh, firstly uh, used uh, we have uh, replaced it with the i whereas in the middle english it used to be it used to come with y i am in building of a poor house poor house poor is this thing uh, of a poor house yes so we are saying that uh, the fourth form that is a present participle uh, i and g it comes uh, with uh, b plus with the progressive things some verb phrases some more verb phrases uh, middle english saw the beginnings of shall and will to mark the future tense middle english really is giving so many things to the english uh, you see it is developing its uh, phrasal structure it's now it is moving on to after giving it different tenses of progressive tense the perfect tense it is moving on to the verb phrases etc uh verb phrases middle english saw the beginning of shall and will this is which tense this is the future tense to mark the future tense yes uh corn when all mankind shall be from death to living brought when all men kind shall be the word shall shall be from dead to live to living brought to living brought the use of word shall that we call these days is the shall the use of the word shall it refers to the future tense that it would happen uh, and and such will have the kingdom of hell and such will have again will and shall be and will have these are very very modern concepts although yet you see that they initiated they started basically in the middle english period and such will have the kingdom of hell not that shall still had degree of obligation must and will of violation want to yes a uh, very uh, um, a very interesting uh, thing to share with you is that these are the we say that these are uh, uh, th these are simply uh, the this is about the degree of the verbs that shall and will shall is actually for example if some if you say that i shall do this i shall shall means uh, obligatory it is must it is must that i would do it i shall do it i must do it it is it's a kind of obligation that all of you uh, sh all of you shall wear this uniform on that specific occasion shall wear it's an obligation it is compulsory it is mandatory for them to do it and uh, will of violation will sometimes use it is used uh, to refer i i would i would like to wear a uniform means it is my will i will like to wear it is i it is as if i want to wear it it refers to want to whereas shall refers to obligation something that is compulsory that is uh, really uh, needed that is must auxiliary verbs 
Uh, auxiliary verbs uh, in simple language we can we can say that these are the helping verbs. These are developed in the middle English period. They begin to replace subju subjunctive uh, uh, in uh, parts of the sentences, and uh, it was again developed. See uh, that how many things have developed into. Uh, into the syntax of English in Middle English period. It developed and began to replace subjunctive verbs. For example, that I may rich be, that I may rich be, be is what? Be is an auxiliary verb. It is used here. But the sub subjunctive is still more common in middle english than the modern english how law how lawful so it were however la lawful it might be the first one is that of we can say it's of middle english and the second one is that of modern english period when there i did when there i did or did this is again an expression of middle english and the second one is that of modern English period. Why am I not that? So the auxiliary verbs vary from uh, they have been they have started developing in this age, and they actually they were introduced in this age. The do explosions. Let's see how this do has always been uh, very very much uh, you know uh, troublesome for the students. They have been writing poor English is because of this do. How substitutes for a previous verb? Yes, do was uh, used uh, number one to substitute for a previous verb. For example, camels may forgo for for beer drink and so many not the horse do. Yes, so many not the horse do. This is that we are substituting a previous verb. We are not writing. Uh, the complete uh, phrase that was already written it is actually uh, when we uh, when in the middle English the word do was used it means that it is referring to the previous verb that was used camels may forbear drink and and so may not the horse do Camels can forego drink and thus can not the horse do. Yes, do is referring back to this previous verb. So what is this? This it means that the do in the sentence is a substitute for the verb that has already come in that sentence. As a causative, as a causative, uh, like make or have uh, it is also used uh, sometimes all his halls i will ha i will do painted with pure gold i will do painted with the pure gold at his halls i will have painted i will have painted with the pure gold so again uh, here do as i will do paint do is referring to the causative case uh, that uh, all his holes I will do painted with the pure gold do is referring to I will do paint that they would do it I will have painted with the pure gold so it is referring to the process of painting it is used in a case of as causative next to a main verb Sometimes do comes next to the main verb and uh, so, sometimes uh, if it comes to the next to the main verb, uh, can we say that it is emphatic? Mm, perhaps not really. And uh, let's look at the example. Uh, the example is unto the maid that her doth swear. Unto the maid to the maids that her does serve that her does serve next to the main verb what is the main verb verb is the serve do is coming just next just before the main verb the serve is the main verb so this this was another uh, 
position of the do where it can come and where it was uh, used in the middle english period next is negative and interrogative clauses began in middle english still not as common as simple verbs although they started but still they were not very common my master did not grant it feder why ye weep my master did not grant it again the use of not this is negative sentence why do ye weep why do ye weep the question mark this is uh, the first sentence is an example of negative phrases and the second is an example of interrogative yes this is interrogative so we can say that this started at that time syntax within the clauses let's say that how syntax has changed uh, above the level of phrase it started we started basically with the level of word then we moved on to the level of phrase now we are going to move on to the level of clauses and we are going to see that how the grammatical structures have changed from the old english period to the more middle english period on the level of syntax there was a trend towards modern word order yes a lot of trend was there as we have seen that um, the use of many uh, words and the many grammatical categories are almost the same as are there in the modern english uh, for example what was the structure that was followed in the middle english it was svo still the most common very amazing see how old the structure of english really is this is what we know subject verb and object a very very common uh, uh, clause structure of the middle english period and then the next is subject object and verb occasionally found it is also found that you this work that you this work not for let neglect that you this work not not neglect sometimes first come the subject this work okay uh, that you you is the subject as you can see that that you the subject part is the you this work is the object part what not to do is not to neglect this is v this is a subject object and verb structure that was also found uh, we have uh, found a few traces in the history from there vso are regular for questions and commands yes verb subject and object it was a regular um, pattern it was a regular uh, sentence structure for to ask the questions and to give various commands uh, for example gave ye the child anything gave is what verb ji means you the subject what to whom the child anything sub verb subject and object this was to ask question uh, or uh, to give uh, commands bring ji the horse bring is again that we call imperative sentences this is a verb g is a subject the horse horse is what object so what what structures have we followed v s o here uh, just to give commands and to ask the questions and then s o v and the structure and then s v o a very very the most common structure that is found yes syntax within the clauses uh, osv used to emphasize the object sometimes if uh, the depending upon the context it was necessary to uh, give emphasis on the object so uh, this structure this osv was used this book is what this is object i this is subject and then have made and written have made and written is v 
This is a verb. Mate and written is a verb. So the structure is O S V. And then, uh, then the next is object, verb, and subject was still common for the same thing. That again, another variation within this uh, sentence uh, structure uh, was, for example, cloth is is what this is object. Have is verb. And then, uh, who have it? The subject is they. Clothes have they none. Clothes have they none. Object comes first, then comes the verb, and then comes subject. I already uh, again uh, two more structures. O S V and O V S that we found if the emphasis was to put on the object. Syntax within the sentences. Now we are moving above that level as well. We we have started by looking at the single words. We moved on to phrases. Phrases phrase is a combination of more than two words. Then we came uh, to the level of clause. Clause is a uh, clause is a combination of the words that has a subject and the predicate of its own. And then we are moving on to the sentence that has a subject verb or uh, that is a beautiful combination of many clauses we can say is a sentence. Now we are going to look at the syntax structure, the grammatical structure of Middle English period at the level of sentence. Coordinated and so m more than the subordinated when or while run on the sentence was there. Yes. A run on the sentence was there where so many things were said again and again. Let's look uh, at uh, the following uh, text that is given. I'll be reading it out and you do need to identify that how many uh, coordinated and subcoordinated clauses are there and is there any run on the sentence or not. Coordinated clauses are those clauses where the two sentences are combined with and and so. And more than subordinated clauses. And then uh, let's see. The subordinated uh, clauses would start with when and while. Subordinate where one sentence is de dependent on the other. Where one sentence cannot exist on its own. Then Sir Launcelot had a condition that he used of custom to clatter in his sleep and to speak often of his ladies. Um, Queen Genever. So Sir Launcelot had awaked as long as it had pleased him. And so by of course of Kent he slept and Dame Elian both. And in his sleep he talked and clattered as a joy of the love that been uh, between Queen Genever and him. And so as he talked so loud, the queen had him there as she lay in their chamber. And when she had him, uh, she heard him, so clatter she was worn, mm, she was worth uh, out of measure and for anger and pain with not what to do. And then she cried so loud, the Sir Launcelot awaked. This is an one extract that has been taken from uh, Melody's uh, Mortar the author uh, book, and uh, let's see that uh, how uh, different things have been used. Uh, let's look w whether there is an example of coordination clauses and or so. Yes, let's start looking from the first line. Then Sir Launcelot had a condition, and to so. And so, and combination of every word is every sentence is almost starting with and. Okay, the next is when or while. Uh, now let's try to find out the examples of when and while. Um, when and while are those sentences when and that shows the subordination uh, clauses. When and when she heard him so clatter, she was worth out of measure and for anger. And is there, and 
when and while let's look uh, try to find if there is any other example of while as well then sir launcelot had a condition that he used for the custom to clatter his slave queen geneva so sir launcelot had awakened so long as it had pleased him and so by of course he could slept by of course perhaps there is no other example of the while so these are the syntax uh, structure that is found in this middle english period in the in the extract of uh, from uh, at the extract from uh, melory's book and uh, you see that this is uh, written in the more middle english period in the tradition of the syntax uh, structure that was there that was followed in the middle english period used of customs used of custom was a custom to and then clatter is referred to the chatter uh, kind is referred to the nature and west is referred to the new middle english vocabulary let's see uh, what kind of middle, middle english vocabulary was and uh, Uh, before this we have looked in detail the syntactical structures we have uh, seen that how the things have changed starting from the level of the phrase then moving on to the level of clause and then moving on to the level of sentence now we are going to explore that middle english vocabulary how was that and how and whether it has changed or not beginning of the huge english vocabulary susceptibility to borrowings yes uh, a, a very uh, prominent feature of the age is borrowing uh, english was borrowing so many words because at that time it it had not developed its own uh, vocabulary bank yet there is layering of vic uh, vocabulary that is uh, found uh, for example uh, colloquial uh, or the formal colloquial is a everyday language and the formal is the language of formal setup and then everyday or the technical language then there is general or the specialized english it became more cosmopolitan it became uh, more acceptable there is loss of inflectional systems and it made it easier to borrow a uh, loss of inflectional systems uh, was there some systems uh, that were uh, inflectional were uh, they have already been uh, uh, it was actually they were already in loss they were getting weak and uh, they made it easier to borrow the things rather than uh, actually we can uh, join inflections in uh, the language so it was quite easy no worries about gender declension uh, etc there was no worries although uh, the things uh, were changing and the vocabulary was changing and um, so many things were being added in the vocabulary so many things were being borrowed from other languages from their accents uh, but there was uh, actually it was a development stage so uh, people uh, like uh, felt it better not to uh, not Uh, no, uh, not to be worried about the gender and the other things also english has many morphemes not hard to say foreign words definitely morphemes are the words that are the uh, words that have been taken or the borrowed from other languages scandinavian norse uh scan uh, now let's look at uh, the influence of scandinavian influence uh, uh, who have contributed towards the vocabulary development of scandinavian uh to, towards the uh, vocabulary development of english language and these words have actually been borrowed from scandinavian as well as norse influence some borrowed in old english uh, written in they were written in the middle english north and east midlands then they then they got spread it actually the words uh, that were being borrowed they actually started getting uh, from the old english period and then they written in the middle, middle english period mm. in 1150 to 1250 there is uh the words like anger bag band bloom booth bound going to bull cake call carp uh, it's it is stood for complaint uh, that cast and clip it 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 was it is used for cut club die egg fellow flit gate gape gear get hit husband ill kid kindle lawn loft lose low meek muck raise rensek red root rotten sail same scab scale scare scat scort seat seam skill skin slice sky snare swain take 
thrall, thrive, thrust, thwart, trust, ugly, want, want, vessel, window, and wing. Look at the words that have been borrowed. This, this, there is a range of vocabulary that has uh, been borrowed or that has come from the Scandinavian influence to uh, on in the English language and all this transition was it, it actually started in 1150 and it, it remained uh, up till 1250 it's a hundred years it it's a century and within a century these much words have been found within middle English then when we move on to 1250 to 1350 uh, it's again a complete century and see perhaps these are little less than those words that were found in 1150 to 1250 these words are all bait ball brack bark was used for the tree bat for the animal birth blend wall bracken brand branch crawled uh, tracks troop flat flow geld gift girt uh, then uh, let me skip up a few of these words and I'll be moving on to slaughter uh, slate slight snub stack stragger stram stream weak and whirl again a, a huge number of vocabulary uh, collected another on a uh, uh, and uh, another in the next hundred years and it was uh, already expanded uh, uh, from 1250 to 1350 now over a hundred uh, periods of uh, over a hundred years uh, of uh, this era uh, people have been or uh, different words have been collected uh, out of different things yes then the next is uh, 1350 to 1500 it's more than a century it's uh, 1350 to 1450 is 100 years and then 1450 to 1500 and 150 years within 150 years so, uh, much more many uh, words and influences uh, were there and um, a, a list of the words is given here for example awkward basque ball bulk down down refers to the feathers Eddy, Firth, Flag, Freckle, Froth, Gap, Gasp, Keel, Keg, Leak, Link, Rack, Reef, uh, Reindeer, Scant, Scrap, Steak, Tatter, Teether and Tyke. This is a, a huge number of vocabulary that you have noticed. Uh, it makes uh, hundreds of words that were collected over almost 350 uh, years of time and these were all the influence of Scandinavian language that they have made on English language. While uh, there are some words that were common in both the Scandinavian as well in English, there were some no, uh, Norse loans that were replaced in the English words. For example, Hatton has been uh, replaced with the call and uh, Bhatton and both. Um, Nimen and Fawn, uh, these are, we are talking about this thing, uh, the, the word that is already, yes, these words, they have been replaced with take, pot, call, partial replacement was also done, here Fawn, it, it makes Kai, uh, as in Y, then some Norse crawl has been, crawl has already been replaced with the creep, and then some cognates doublets were there we have already looked into the details of the cognates at what these are and what differences have they made uh, so I'm, I won't be like repeating the things again cognate doublets are Norse raise skin and skirt and English rear shin and the shirt yes uh, then uh, some sun in the personal names uh, was also added uh, that was again an influence of Scandinavian uh, people Scandinavian language uh, for example uh, look at the example of this word Nelson Anderson this extended to the English name for example Edwardson Edmondson and French names Jackson and Richardson look how the things are influencing it is not only the vocabulary that is colloquial vocabulary that is formal vocabulary that is technological vocabulary all kind of vocabulary is being influenced by the Scandinavian uh, languages uh, also the names names what is another dimension it was also uh, uh, taken into consideration and the names uh, were uh, actually 
repeated uh, and by the their names were added by the end of uh, they have son they actually the word is uh, personal names mean they ended son and you have looked at so many of the examples some of them are french examples some of them are the english examples and they have been added nelson anderson edmondson these were different of names even the names got influenced names got influenced by medieval english then some french influence on the vocabulary by far the most important uh, influence uh, was that of the french uh, vocabulary and it was slow until 1200 why because of different several reasons the number one was there were several bilingual generations to get comfortable with the french words definitely there were different uh, generations were growing up at that time we are saying that the, pro the process was very very slow reason uh, because of several bilingual generations uh, were getting up and they were uh, trying to get comfortable with the french words so uh, that's why the french influence was a little slow that time another reason very few english texts before 1200 have been found almost all the texts were more in french latin languages other than the english french loans in all fields we have seen we will notice uh, that uh, the uh, french words are found uh, almost in all uh, the fields of english for example if uh, it's music architecture painting and uh, if, if there are some words that are related to cuisine bake sweet serve plate casserole fork stir mince roast fly etc these spaghetti pizza pesto um these are different words that have made an uh, influence on english and they have been uh, added as uh, as the words as perhaps the native words spaghetti spaghetti is there pizza is there this is what we have been using all the time and these words you see have come from the french influence uh, in the english language this is uh, look at the uh, The, the sample of the thousand words is given, and uh, look at this table uh, that uh, French loans were made uh, for uh, English language. Uh, uh, from uh, starting from 1050, there were only two words that were found. 1050 to 1100, no words, ha no loans have been added in the English. 1101 to 1150, there were two hardly. 1151 to 1200, there were seven. See how gradual it is. How gradual! Twelve zero one to twelve fifty, you would found thirty five words. Yes, we were discussing that before twelve hundred. You see, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Only eleven words were added as a French loan in the English. Whereas after twelve hundred, it it really moved very very rapidly and uh, it in 1201 to 1250 it has come up to 35 words 1251 to 1300 it became 99 then it started uh, rising in 1301 to 1350 it it came up to the level of 108 in 1350 to 1400 it was raised to the level of 198 numbers Fourteen. It was perhaps the largest number, and the, this is the period that is perhaps the period when French were living so much in the close connection, when they were uh, influencing each other, and this was the time when most of the French words contributed and have added in the English language, and the total amount of words was one ninety eight. From 1401 to 1450, again it started declining. It's 74. 1451 1500, it's 990. 1501 to 1550 is 62. 1551 to 1600, it's 95. Again, a bit rise, rise and fall, rise and fall is going on. 1601 to 1650, it is 61 words. Uh, 1651 to 1700, they have risen up to 37 words. They they did not rise actually. They did they have declined up to 37 words. 1700 to 1750, they came up to 33 words. 1751 to 1800, they came up to 26 words. And then 1801 to 1850, uh, they came up to 46 words. 
and then 1850 to 1900 they came up to 25 words see how the graph is moving the graph was too low in this initial period it again was low in 1900 it raised a high stream a high and then it came here the highest is this stream I hope that now you have clear idea that how uh, that how many words have been added from French into English French learns by the semantic field let's not only focus on the syntax that is the grammatical structure we are going to look at the semantic fields we are going to look at the meanings of the words as well and we are going to see that how uh, French loan how the borrowed words from the from French language they have contributed towards this thing uh, let's uh, look at uh, the relationships and the ranks of the different words for example parentage ancestors aunt uncle cousin gentleman or man, noble, peer, peasant, servant, villain, page, courtier, squire, madam, sir, princess, duke, count, marquis, baron. The relationships and the ranks, these have been grabbed, have been borrowed from French. Look, it's a huge vocabulary. The house and its furnishing, again, so many words have been taken from, for example, the word porch, cellar, Pantry, closet, parlor, chimney, arch, pane, wardrobes, chair, table, lamp, couch, cushion, mirror, curtain, quillet, counterpane, towel, and blanket. Perhaps as if uh, uh, it seems as if there is no one word uh, that is of English its own word. It, it has come all from French. Let's see that how it has affected food and eating. Uh, within food and eating it has come up to dinner, supper, taste, broil, fry, plate, goblet, serve, beverage, sauce, salad, gravy, fruit, crepe, beef, pork, mutton, salmon, sugar, onion, cloves, mustard, everything, everything it seems is coming from French. We are getting the same meanings. We are looking at uh, just a little variation of the meanings. And we see that how, what a range of vocabulary of items are available in French language. Then look at the fashion, uh, the words that are related to the field of fashion, the, the meanings that carry almost the same meanings. And that would come in the semantic field of the fashion. And that, the words that have, already, that have been borrowed by French. Yes, fashion, dress garment, coat, cloak, pantaloons, bonnet, boots, serge, cotton, satin, fur, button, ribbon, base, embroidered, pleat, cassette, jewel, pearl, bracelet. There are so many words, a long list of the words that has come from there. They again, same is the case with the sports and entertainment as well. Within sports, is tournament, is canal, scent, terrier, falcon, the sport, audience, entertain, amusement, recreation, prize, tenets, uh, again, a lot of words. Uh, let's look at a few of the words of vocabulary items uh, that, uh, that French has given us uh, in the field of, in the field of art, music and literature. Art itself is a word of French, amazing. Painting, sculpture, portrait, color, music, melody, lute, tabor, hot boy, carol, poet, story, rhyme, chapter, title, romance, lay, tragedy, rondel, ballad. These are all the words that have been taken from uh, the semantic field of uh, art, music and literature. And these are the words that have come from the French loans. Uh, did you know uh, that what are the meanings of this word? The word ballad ballad is actually a long poem that is that tells about some narrative or some uh, that tells about some incident that has taken place okay education 
Within education, again, there have been so many words and I am getting amazed uh, time by time when I am going through all these things that how, what, what a great influence it really had apart from everything else. It was an enormous influence and we still have all these words in our English language. Look at a few vocabulary items that, in, that have come from education. Study, science, reason, university, college, dean, form, train, grammar, noun, tome, chapter, page, paper, pencil, pen, copy, pupil, indict, test, subject, lectern, dice, everything <laughs> again. Uh, uh, let's look at a little vocabulary of medicine. Medicine, surgeon, pain, disease, remedy, cure, contagious, perhaps the uh, spellings of contagious have changed a, a little now, plague, humor, again uh, a difference between in uh, Britishers and Americans sometimes we add H-U-M-O-U-R, uh, we add Jew, uh, sometimes we, add, we don't add Jew, uh, that is a difference of uh, uh, Britishers and uh, Americans spellings uh, and we we see that this is actually coming from the French loans and the spellings would vary uh, later on. Pulses, fracture, og, gout, distemper, drug, balm, herb, powder, sulfur, bandage, ointment and poison. Uh, uh, again a list of words is, that is given by the French. Yes, a few more lists have been given uh, that are related to government. Uh, you can see, you can have a look yourself that uh, how important these words are and these words really exist even today's, uh, today's English as well. They are, they have got the same status and they are existing uh, in the same way. Uh, for example, government, state, country, city, village, office, councillor, treasurer, uh, exchequer, registrar, mayor, citizen. All the words that were related to government vocabulary. And then the words related to law, jury, appeal, evidence, inquest, prison, crime. Wow, I'm just, I'm really uh, happy to know uh, that the word crime, it, it is again coming from uh, the French origins. Because my uh, research is actually, uh, my PhD research is a bit about crimes as well. Okay, le uh, let's look at uh, some other words that are related to the church. Chapel, choir, cloister, crucifix, religion, clergy, chaplain, parson, sermon, faith, miracle, temptation, divine and salvation. All these words have come from French loans. I've, uh, look at a list of the military words that is given. Uh, military is um, enemy, battle, defense, peace, force, advance, capture, sage, tag, retreat. And then a few other words are captain, spy, mort, order, march and trophy. Let's uh, look at some other words that the little uh, words we say. Uh, for example, the little words uh, that, that, that look quite native and that seems as if they have emerged out of uh, itself. Uh, for example, the words like age, blame, catch, chance. I would not go through all these things. You can have a look yourself. It's kerchief, large, letter, line, mischief, square, staff, strange and Jews etc. These are different words again that have come from these are small words by little words and still they have come from French. They are not even uh, created by themselves. Okay. Uh, there are uh, some words uh, that are related to shipping and seafaring and these, uh, this, these vocabulary items were added by the German and the Dutch. Then some, uh, some other words that were related to farming and agriculture and uh, they, have, uh, they are actually uh, mm, perhaps uh, come from again French. Uh, but although they came from French, but they were less affected by the French. There were a few of the areas like government, like sports, like some other things that we discussed just earlier, that they were so much, they were enormously uh, affected by the French. 
but uh, these areas all but these are a few areas for example the area of shipping and surfing all the words that uh, that are given are uh, are english it's on coinage they have coined it they already they have explored it made it and then farming and agriculture uh, it is again uh, the english convention of themselves and then there are some words let look at some english uh, uh, words that, that are of its real uh, that have its real origin in english these words are acre long field hedge furrow so till reap all these are words uh, are related to the farming and the agriculture as well goose duck stay pan barn fold these are all english words yes no place uh, name elements uh, we found uh, and then now just move on uh, uh, from the single individual units of vocabulary to the larger parts of speech almost all nouns verbs and adjectives uh, that we see in the middle english period there is no change of grammar um, um, a, a little change is there but not uh, major changes as we have seen subject verb object structure is there sov ovs all the all the kind of structures that were perhaps are prevalent these days they have come from the same uh, origins and they are the same as they are up till now they used to be the same as they are up till now some prepositions and conjunctions are for example in spite of because during these were there as well they they have borrowed some as nouns and verbs then they made it into function words as when they were neutralized for example the word like cause it was used in early 13th century and then by cause of it was it was starting uh, getting used in mid 14th century and then the word because it started getting used into english in the late 14th century these are different parts of speech and these are different uh, their features that we found in english yes uh, let's see that how norman russell paris and french uh, what have they done it on the vocabulary and uh, syntactical structures of english earlier nouns from the normal french by 14th century from parisian french were there sometimes hard to tell that what are they but some of them are germanic loan uh, loans into the french for example g and v these sounds these words became changed with the v and uh, g is actually it is parisian uh, word then uh, we'll look at some other examples that for example canal uh, it changed into channel cattle change into chattels uh, and then catch it change into chase and car into chariot uh, the, actually the origin of the original word uh, from which the word car has been derived it is de derived from the word chariot quite a few french loans were originally germanic loans into the french more uh, doubt uh, doubles equip ship soap soap uh, these were a few of the words that have we have uh, Uh, again derived from different influences then some latin influence let's see uh, it it's uh, it was tended to be learned uh, in religious there were different vocabularies in legal items there were different vocabularies and then there were regarding mis miscellaneous words they were there for example ad admit divide comprehend lunatic uh, lapidary temporal uh, this is actually a latin influence these words have been taken from latin origin celtic uh, influences on english english vocabulary and a few words that have been borrowed and taken uh, and and has made as a part of vocabulary and syntax of english uh, for example these are not many a very very few for example bard clan crag glen lodge and then there are uh, some uh, maybe that uh, they are we say that they are from celtic influence bal bre bug gul hog loop etc and then some have entered through french the words of celtic have entered into english by the use of french language car change carton mutton socket vessel etc dutch and low german influence uh, were also there on english vocabulary and uh, grammatical structure and these are later middle english uh, for example lots of trade for example wool as well as several dozen loans uh, what we have found in it uh, 
सिफारिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल द वर्ड्स रिलेटेड टू सिफारिंग द वर्ड्स रिलेटेड टू कंटेनर्स द वर्ड्स रिलेटेड टू ट्रेड वूल ट्रेड एंड मिसलेनियस वर्ड्स दे हैव कम फ्रॉम डच एंड लो जर्मन इन्फ्लुएंस यू नो यू रिमेंबर द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वेर वी डिस्कस्ड द जर्मन वन वॉज हाई जर्मन एंड द सेकेंड वॉज लो जर्मन these these are the influences that have made its contribution in english from the low germans as well as from the dutch some other languages let's look at some uh, a quick uh, preview at some other languages that have uh, uh, contributed towards the development of uh, vocabulary items as well as the syntactical structures of english in the middle english period greek through french there were some greek words that have creeped into english through the use of french language for example squirrel diaper then greek through latin the words like philosophy and paradigms uh, arabic all through french or latin arabic words have come from uh, french uh, or as well as latin but not directly influenced on english for example the word cipher oh great the word cipher is from arabic origin the word saffron great again it is again from arabic origin and it has creeped through the french language or the latin language into our english persian through other languages it has come for example the word like spinach like lemon like musk hebrew the words uh, hebrew words for example uh, they have uh, creeped in from french or latin and uh, there are some uh, selvic and hungarian words and there are some unknown words that have come from anonymous languages look at the word puzzle wallet that we use boy class junk kidney there are so many words and the origin of these exact languages is unknown we say that these have been added from some other languages with this we will end our today's lecture and uh before we and we before we actually end our lecture let me give you a very quick pre uh, quick recapitulation of what we have covered today uh we have covered actually uh, we were looking at the vocabulary as well as the syntactical structure of english language we started firstly with the syntactic structure and within syntactic structure we started with the level of phrase we we looked at how the things have changed on the level of phrase then moved on to the level of clause and we see this yes, okay that this was the this is the structure of the modern english this was a structure in the middle english or this was a structure in the old english then after that we moved on to the syntactical changes on the level of sentence and then we realized okay yes there are so many changes that have taken place then we moved on to the vocabulary items within vocabulary we see that english is a language uh, that has a long long list of so many things um that that is a combination of so many languages and the most enormous and the and the largest influence on english was that of french there were we have looked at uh, a graph of 1000 words that were added into this over 350 years we have seen that french has influenced almost every field of the life of english then uh after looking at that we have also looked at the scandinavian influence we have also looked at the celtic influence then after looking at the celtic influence we have moved on to looking at some the influences of some other languages some low low german languages some dutch languages as well as these are the languages that have given its words its uh, items its vocabulary items to the to the english language then finally we winded up our lecture today with other languages and we had seen that they, that although there are some languages that have made a direct impact and a direct contribution in the word bank in the vocabulary bank of english language whereas whereas there are some languages that have not made a direct impact on english language rather they have uh, worked implied impliedly through some other languages by the tool of some others help they have worked uh, with the help of some other thing 
Yes, uh, these uh, these uh, some different languages were Arabic, Persian, Hebrew, Slavic, etc. And there, and towards the end of today's lecture, we have also noticed that there were many uh, lectures. Uh, sorry, there was many words that do uh, perhaps do not. Uh, have uh, some specific origin and perhaps that are unknown of any specific language yet the words are very uh, uh, commonly used by us even today in the modern English period and uh, uh, with this today we will end up our lecture here and uh, I hope that uh, you, you, you have got uh, a good comprehension of what I taught you today and uh, Till uh, the next lecture, please take good care and I'll be back with my next lecture and uh, t by that time, Allah Hafiz.